Bitcoin. Even if you've been hiding under a rock for the last decade, you probably would have heard of it. After its initial explosion in the world's media, it settled down recently, but it's still being touted as the next big thing when it comes to currency and drastic change to the financial system. But what is it? Should you own any? And how should you manage it? That's what I'm going to cover in this video in five easy steps. And before you know it, you'll be a cryptocurrency king. Hey, it's Josh and I'm your financial connoisseur, here to guide you on your way to financial freedom and teach you the best habits to have if you want to become richer. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button and if at the end of the video you like what you see and want others to see it too, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button too. Alright, so let's get started with 5 tips for buying and managing Bitcoin. First off, what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is an innovative payment network and a new kind of money, known as cryptocurrency. It was first launched in 2009 by the mysterious Satoshi Nakamoto, which is presumed to be a pseudonym, as a reaction to the volatile nature of traditional currency as demonstrated by the global financial crisis at the time. There is only a limited amount of Bitcoin available online, 21 million in fact, and every Bitcoin that comes into existence through mining, where anyone can verify transactions to help secure the network. Thanks to its use of blockchain technology, also developed by Nakamoto as a method for cryptocurrency transactions, transferring Bitcoin is completely public. On top of this, forged transactions are actually impossible, so it really is a currency exchange for the 21st century. On top of being the most secure way to pay online, Bitcoin is also the largest cryptocurrency in the world, as well as offering lower fees than traditional forms of payment. Not to mention the huge amount of resources being developed to manage Bitcoin, as well as the potential future adoption of more widespread blockchain technology. It's clear to see why investing in Bitcoin could be a smart move, with a world fast moving to exclusive online payments. But before you decide to invest, remember that this is an investment, and like with all investments, things like stocks and shares, there's still some element of risk. Bitcoin is famously volatile in the market, and most people that have Bitcoin tend to hold on to it for a longer term investment. So don't expect to get rich overnight by buying up a load of Bitcoin. Now with that being said, let's get started. Number 1. Choosing a brokerage like with management of traditional currency, choosing a decent brokerage is crucial. And just like traditional forms of currency, a brokerage account acts as your holding place for your deposited funds where you can buy, sell and trade. Just this time, we're dealing with Bitcoin instead. So, a cryptocurrency brokerage is a company that acts as a go-between for the cryptocurrency markets to allow you to buy and sell cryptocurrencies. You then do this at prices set by the broker. Let's look at two of the most well-known brokerages, eToro and Coinbase. First, eToro. This is a great entry-level brokerage with an easy-to-use interface that makes buying cryptocurrency really simple. The company does a great job of allowing people to invest easily in Bitcoin with a variety of payment methods. The only downside is that it's not so simple to get your funds into your private wallet, so it might be better for those who don't want to withdraw immediately. Then there's Coinbase. This is one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges in the world, serving over 100 countries with more than 30 million customers. Coinbase has a wide array of services, but their main service allows users to buy and sell Bitcoins through a bank account, credit card and debit card. Coinbase offers decent rates, but it's also been known to have pretty poor quality customer service. So when looking for a brokerage yourself, you could go with either of these two, but there are plenty around. A couple more are Binance and Gemini. Just make sure that when choosing a broker, that you choose a company known for safety, ease of use and good value. Both Coinbase and eToro are good for all of these. I have links to these two companies in the description below if you want to sign up for free. Number two, funding your account. Now that you've chosen your account, you need to start funding it. Now, although brokerages can offer easy ways to fund your account through credit and debit cards, it is best to avoid these as you have to pay big fees if you decide to use them. If you live in the US, you can buy Bitcoin with a connected bank account with an ACH bank transfer. The same is the same in the UK. Coinbase charges a flat 1.49% fee on all transactions. Alternatively, if you go with a site like Crypto.com, then they won't charge a fee on ACH or wire transfer. 
In fact, with the wire transfer option, the funds will reach your account within one to two business days. However, you need to deposit a minimum of $5,000. So this really is only an option for serious investors. ACH is a better bet for those wanting to take a dip into the crypto waters. It takes longer to go through though, typically three to five days, but you can deposit as little as $20 and up to $20,000 at a time. This is with crypto.com. Shop around and see what works best for you, but try and avoid using cards if you can. Number three, ways to buy Bitcoin. On top of what I've already discussed, there are other ways to buy Bitcoin. You can use your checking account to fund your brokerage account, but there's also buying Bitcoin inside your retirement account using what is called a Bitcoin IRA. In an IRA or 401k account, you can keep your investments in traditional securities such as stocks, bonds, and money market funds. Bitcoin IRAs are essentially the same, but provide an additional option for investing in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. You can buy Bitcoin with credit and debit cards, as we've already mentioned, but do avoid doing this if possible. The other way you can get Bitcoin in your account is to transfer it from another brokerage account. And this is where the currency really comes into its own. All you need is the Bitcoin address on the other account or exchange to transfer your Bitcoin. It's that simple. I recommend using a company called Bitcoin IRA that specializes in these types of accounts and transfers. I've provided a link in the description if you want to check them out too. Number four, two ways to store your Bitcoin. Once you've decided on a brokerage and a way of purchasing Bitcoin, you need to decide how you're going to store it. Are you going to keep it with your brokerage or use another method? These can be split into what's called a hot wallet and a cold wallet. A hot wallet is storage that allows cryptocurrency users to store, send and receive tokens like what we've already talked about with Coinbase. There's also an opportunity here to earn interest depending on where you want to store your Bitcoin. BlockFi offers attractive interest rates for storing your coins with them and they pay out monthly interest for storing your crypto with them. Hot wallets are linked with public and private keys through transactions that also act as a security measure. But as hot wallets are hosted online, there is a security risk in comparison to its cold wallet counterpart. Cold storage, on the other hand, takes things offline, which makes any kind of theft impossible. Rather than having your funds readily available in a hot wallet, you can download your keys onto a secure physical device. Here's the one that I have here, the Ledger Nano. So Ledger Nano and Trezor are good examples of secure wallets that you can buy and store your crypto in. Bear in mind though, that if you take this approach, then you're potentially missing out on accruing any interest from places like BlockFi, as your funds are sitting on a device and you're the only one that has access to them. But there is a saying in the cryptocurrency community, not your keys, not your crypto. So if you really want to make sure that your crypto is safe, a cold wallet is the safest place. Number five, filing taxes. Our last tip isn't the most exciting, but it is actually probably one of the most important. Just because Bitcoin is an online hosted cryptocurrency, it doesn't mean that you get away with not paying taxes, unfortunately. You need to treat Bitcoin just like that you would any stock investment in that any profits made on it are going to need to be declared to good old Uncle Sam. Don't worry, you don't need to let him know unless you decide to sell and turn a profit. So if you're storing your Bitcoin for the future, which a lot of people tend to do in anticipation of their increased value in an increasingly digital world, then you don't need to declare anything. However, if you're looking flush, want to cash in and decide to sell, then you're going to have to declare this on your tax returns. This is really important as there can be a misconception that because you're not dealing in traditional currency, then you don't need to file in traditional forms of paperwork for it. Unfortunately, this isn't the case, and we think it would be a shame if all your hard-earned Bitcoin profits got lost, but not declaring them and being hit with a massive IRS fine. But the good news is that your records should be nice and easy to pull up when you need them, as you're dealing with an exclusively digital currency. So this is Bitcoin. The jury is still out on whether cryptocurrency is the future, but there is a chance it could be. And with Bitcoin being the main player in this industry, it might be where the smart money is moving to. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying invest all your money in Bitcoin. Like all investments, the smartest thing to do is diversify your investments to reduce risks. If you treat Bitcoin just like another stock investment, then that should be the best way of dealing with it. After all, it is very similar to manage. You can use a brokerage to host funds and move them around. 
Yes, it does have a tendency to be volatile in the market, and there are potentially big gains to be made if you're knowledgeable and manage it properly. Plus, if you're smart and take these tips on board as well as several others that you can find online, then there is a big opportunity to increase your investment over time. It's worth remembering that Bitcoin is no silver bullet, and it's definitely not going to make you rich overnight, just like with stocks. Be prepared to weather a few storms, be patient with storing your Bitcoin, and control the controllable when it comes to buying, selling, storing, and declaring the promising new currency. Another saying in the cryptocurrency community is your first investment into Bitcoin should be your education. Hey, so if you've enjoyed this video, make sure that you subscribe to this channel to see more content like this. In the comments below, let me know if you'll be investing in any Bitcoin. Thanks for watching.